Hi everybody. So I'm in my garden this afternoon and I thought maybe you guys might like an update on how my garden is going. I know I said I was going to do a video in a week and I didn't. I apologize. <laughs> May is pretty nutty for people who like to garden. So I a week feels <laughs> feels like a month, you know. So um We've been pretty busy getting everything set up for our maintenance business so and getting everything ready with all the COVID stuff, so it's been a little hard. I'm going to go over the questions for the last video. So I talked about tools last time, and I really liked all the response that I got from it, so that was really awesome. I'm glad that you guys learned something and maybe bought a few new tools that you didn't have in your work shed before. Hannah asked um, where she could get my serrated root slayer shovel. Um, Lee Valley Tools sells it. So does Amazon as well. Um, it's from a smaller designer and tool. So like either way, you're supporting them. So that's, that's awesome. Um, if you go to Lee Valley, though, I think you'd do better just because you'll probably see a bunch of other things that <laughs> you might really want to buy. So they have a bunch of really seems useless but really useful tools so they have a full selection um bridget was asking what i did with edging material after i was done with it so i have a big compost bin that i put soil grass cuttings like a whole bunch of stuff that i put in so if you have a compost bin you could put it in that um, otherwise i just try when i edge especially with grass is to shake as much of the soil out of the grass as proper as possible after that, it's not really that heavy, so it's not as hard to fit it into just a regular leaf bag and drop it off. I, it, us out here in Embram Russell Township, we only have pickup twice a year. And this is something over the next couple of years I'm going to actively try to change because I think that this is not promoting a green lifestyle. You should be getting green waste picked up every week. It should be the most waste that you have. And the community out here should start making compost. And I think this is something we really need to work on. So over the next couple of years, I'm going to try and change that aspect. Because even people who are maybe not able to pick up a huge bag like that and put it into their trunk, it makes them less likely to get out and garden. So I'd really like to see it the same as the big city centers is that Green waste pickup every single week would be much better, but even once every two weeks or even once a month would be better than what we have, which is seasonal right now. And then Bridget was talking also about how happy she was that she fluffed her mulch. Yeah, fluff your mulch, man. Definitely. It makes it look gorgeous and makes it look like you have a whole new garden again. It's glorious. And then um, Lisa commented that she would like to have some design info for planters. So yeah, I'll do a little garden bed uh, design video next time. I'll look up some stuff that might help you guys. And I kind of don't really do it the same as everyone, but I think it might be a little easier to do it my way than the traditional design method way. So you don't have to really know quite as much. So we'll do that next time. Okay, so today I'm in my garden at the greenhouse, which I've actually ordered a new greenhouse, so I'm super stoked. So soon you'll get to see a video of that transformation, so that's awesome. So I'm going to go over what we have growing so far. Um, to be honest with you, I only have two rows left <laughs> out of, what, do I have eight rows? I have nine rows. Yeah, I have nine rows, so I only have two rows that don't have anything in them now. So if you're gardening, now is the time. Put it in. Put it in. Okay, we look like we got no more frost in the forecast. We don't really have to worry as much anymore about getting snow, even though we got snow last week, which totally bummed me out. But we have all this stuff now that... It's nice and warm. So you'll stick your hand. I was in the dirt all day today, so I apologize. I probably have some on my face or whatever. So the dirt is warm. This is the time. So if you're putting in tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, anything that likes it warm, eggplant, tropicals, you got to be careful still. If the forecast says it might get a little bit cold, then just throw a sheet over them or 
put a garbage can over top. Just anything to keep the frost off their leaves is good enough. It's not so much the ambient air temperature, it's the fact that the frost settles on their leaves and kills all their leaves and kills the plant. So you just have to do, uh, <laughs> you just have to do that and then it's, it's not, then it won't cause any harm and you can have your garden out. So I have everything planted except for two rows. One row I think is eventually gonna end up being flowers that we cut and then another row will be, I don't know, I haven't decided, probably whatever I've forgotten so far. So I'm gonna try and show you. It can be a little tricky this time because I forgot my little tripod so it makes it a little harder. So this row here we've got potatoes. So you'll see right down here we've got a little potato growing here and so I bury them down. So when I plant my potatoes they get planted into a trench and when they're in the trench at the bottom of the trench I put all the potatoes and then I cover them with about Mine had really long runners because they were potatoes from my last crop. So they were like, some of them were almost a foot. It was a little crazy. They were like, get me in the ground. So I planted them with the runners lying flat on the ground like this. And then they'll grow up like that. But if you're just getting seed potatoes that barely have, they just have a little eye growing just a little bit. You just got to cover them with about two, three inches of soil. And then I'll keep covering my potatoes every week for about four weeks and as I cover them they'll grow up and they'll grow up as soon as the the, flat, the sorry the leaves all come out I'll put a little bit more soil on there because you'll get more potatoes out of that by doing a big mound of potatoes because anywhere you get a stalk you'll get more potatoes growing off of it and so I've got two different kinds of potatoes I've got a white variety of potato. Neither of these are like really storage varieties. Like they will store, but they're not like a russet or something that's got a very thick skin. They're fairly thin skin. So I've got a golden and then I've got a red potato. And I just planted, these are when I pulled out my potato harvest for last year. These were all the potatoes that were an inch or a little bit more than an inch. I just didn't use them to cook. I just put them in a pot and put them in my basement and left them alone until it was time to put them in the garden. So it didn't cost me anything again. So basically now I get potatoes free for the rest of my life. All I have to do is just put them in my garden. So the potatoes are growing. So as soon as they get more leafy, I'll put another two inches. And then about, I don't know, it's probably about two, three weeks later, they'll get a little bit taller and more leafy. I'll put another two inches of dirt and then they're ready to go. Okay, and then beside the potatoes, I've got some onions growing here. And beside the onions here, I've got some kale growing. And then on the other side, I have Swiss chard that's just kind of starting to come up right now. So we planted these onions maybe a week ago and they're already sprouting like crazy. So these are not onions from seed, these are sets. So I buy onion sets because growing onions from seed seems it's a little tricky in our climate because we don't really have a lot of time. So if you want to grow them from seed, do it. No problem. But you'll get really small onions at the end. And that's okay. Eat the onions. They'll be delicious. Eat the greens. They're delicious too. So I always put as much plant in each of my mounds as possible. So the kale will get really big. I'll keep it managed later and I'll do a video of me managing it, aka eating it all later. But, and then the Swiss chard kind of grows up on the side, but it gives the onions lots of space. Neither the kale nor the Swiss chard are very heavy on eating the nutrients. So they're not going to hurt the onions in the end, but I've actually never done this pairing before. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but I don't see any problems. I've planted some marigolds already at the front of my rows you can see a few more over there and i've planted some calendula seeds as well um, it's a medicinal flower gorgeous i love it so i plant some of that i plant as many flowers in my beds as possible as it attracts more bees and beneficial insects into my garden so i'm happy about that plus it looks beautiful so I'm not going to complain. So this bed here, it's got some potatoes. You can see them kind of coming up here. And then we'll put more dirt and more dirt like the last one. That row over there has not been planted yet. So 
Maybe you guys could tell me what you want me to plant after you see all the things I'm already planting. Um, in here, I've got some mint. And I know there's going to be people out there that said, Oh my God, I never put mint in your garden. I'm fine with shoveling it out as it gets annoying. I love mint. I drink mint tea almost every day. So for me, it makes sense. For you, it might not. If you like mint, but not that much, maybe keep it in a pot somewhere on your patio you'll get more mint than you could ever use. And then in here, I've got some carrots just starting to grow up here. I'm sorry if you can't really see it as well as I can. I'm trying to show you, but I don't know if it's working. And then we've got a little bald spot here that I haven't planted yet, so we'll see. And then I trellised my peas. I'm super excited. I hope you guys can see it as cute as it looks to me. So I used for my customers, for my maintenance company, we do winter planters every year. And so I took the excess dogwood and old um, willow branches out of those containers. They're all kind of dried up and crusty. They won't be good for next year. So we've got to get new ones every year for those containers. And so I took them out and I made my own trellis. And so I just crisscross the dogwoods because they're straight and then use the willows as more of a kind of branchy part in between. Just using what you have. You can go out and buy trellises. I'm not saying anything negative against that. I'm just saying I always try and reuse as much as I have and I can because why not? So down here you'll see the peas are coming up. So they're ready to go. And so I've trellised everything so that when what the peas will do is this weird spiraling thing. And they'll kind of twist themselves in the air like this until one of their leaders hits something. And once the leader hits something, then it'll wrap around it. And then the pea shoot will grow another leader. And then that leader will do another spiral thing and it'll swirl in the air until it hits something else. So you kind of want to have things close by for it to grow up. If you've already got pea shoots coming out of the ground like me, you want about five inches between each pea shoot. This is not an exact number. I'm just saying don't overcrowd them or you won't get any peas. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of the whole point. But when you're cutting off the pea shoots, if you have too many too close together, make sure to eat them because they're delicious and they're really good for you. So now I've got a dead space in between here. I'm probably going to put in some more lettuces in here probably romaine that was what my husband specifically asked for so that's probably what I'll do and then I got more peas here so I've got a row of peas two rows of peas on the outside and then I've got a row in the inside and I'm going to be honest with you I don't know what it is I planted it and I didn't label it and now I can't really remember what it is it's some sort of lettuce. I just don't know which variety because I've got like seven different kinds. So I have no idea. And so I've got another row of peas here. And then I just planted bok choy right down the middle. So almost every single lettuce variety minus kale loves shade. Okay, they love this like half shade deal where they get morning sun and evening sun, but they're not getting that direct noon, hot, super hot sun. So it's important for you to make sure that if you're growing lettuce, that it doesn't get too hot because it will bolt. And what it means when it bolts is that it's gonna make a flower, which sounds great, but it means you can't get any more lettuce once it makes that flower, it's dead. So it'll dry up and make the flower and then lettuce is toast. So make sure that if you're growing lettuce, once it starts to get hot, which is basically next weekend, make sure that you kind of have other plants near it to give it some shade or consider putting in a shade sometimes. So Canada, unfortunately, our area of Canada has developed this climate structure where we don't really have spring anymore. We have a very long winter then we have about maybe two to three weeks of like what I would consider real spring weather which is like 10 degrees and rainy and then we kind of hop right into 25 and hot and so it can make it very difficult to grow things like lettuce broccoli 
um, cabbages. They'll a lot of them will just go straight to flower and not really produce the product that you were hoping to get. So don't be discouraged if you find that your lettuce is bolting and you're getting flowers and all of that stuff. Yank that lettuce out, try something else, and then in the fall when we get to September and we start to have cool nights again, try that lettuce again. It might work better for you because sometimes we have a nice long fall. Oh, a bumblebee, isn't that great? Already coming out. Okay, so this bed here, it has the peas at the end and the mystery lettuce that I can't remember. But this part here was all planted with spinach and some other, I think it was Swiss chard as well. So when we were getting the snow last week, I got nervous and I didn't want everything to die. And so I put a tarp over the entire bed, all 20 by 40 feet. You can see the tarp here. It's now drying and I've used it a couple of times now to save me from frost. The only problem with the frost this time was that the frost also came with really high winds. And <laughs> these high winds made the tarp rattle like crazy. And so basically I killed all of my spinach and Swiss chard by beating it repeatedly over the head with a tarp in the wind. So a lot of things survived no problem. The potatoes are cool, the onions are cool, the kale is fine, the other Swiss chard was fine because they were still in the ground. And now I've got some of my lettuces that were doing really well. They had little baby lettuces and they looked really cute and I was really excited. Well they all died. And so you know what, I just want you all to understand that even though I have a lot of experience growing things, and I garden every single day. I still make mistakes like throwing a tarp over a garden without putting in any stakes or anything to protect it and just assuming that it would be fine. You know, you can't, uh, you make these little mistakes. It probably cost me like, I don't know, two dollars in seeds, a little bit of heartache to watch all these things die. But you know, I don't really care because you can't, you can't worry about that. That's just silly. Like, don't worry. Just try something else now. Okay. Like, if something died in your garden this week, then you're super bummed about it, or your plants that you started indoors are looking like crap and you think they should look better, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just try it anyway. You'll figure it out. Okay, so that's my motivational <laughs> speech for the week. Don't worry about your mistakes like me. So this garden here, so at the end there, I've got the peas growing, same as the other side. So I've three different varieties of peas. I technically planted four varieties of peas, but one variety either didn't sprout at all or I actually forgot to plant it and thought I did and covered it up with seeds. I can't tell. Or the crows came and ate them all. I don't know, but 0% sprouted. So it makes me feel like I might have had a moment and just forgot to plant them, but whatever. So this one here, you'll see I have pots in the ground. And so why I'm doing this is because tomorrow I'm gonna come, or maybe today if I feel ambitious, I'm gonna come and plant some lettuce in on the sides here. So along the sides here. And all of these pots, every other one is gonna be a pepper plant and every other one is going to be some sort of herb. So probably parsley, cilantro type of things. And so the reason that I put the pots in is that I know that I'm gonna plant these, but it's still a little bit chilly for them to really love life. So I'm keeping them downstairs in my basement for now in their little grow area. And so if I put these pots in ahead of time, that's the size of pot that they're in right now, they'll be great. Then I don't have to disturb any of the lettuce that I'm going to plant today or whatever I choose to plant. I'm not disturbing the roots. I'm not killing anything by ripping the soil apart after I've already planted other things. So I put these pots in preemptively so that I know where I'm gonna plant stuff. I don't have to disturb stuff after it's already growing. And so it just makes it a little easier down the road. I've also done the same thing on my end row here. So I've got pots in the ground here. So this will be all herbs and tomatoes. And then everywhere I have a stick, there's something growing. As you can see, there's a lot of sticks over here. The sticks are for me. 
because I have a very bad habit of putting seeds in the ground and then forgetting that I put seeds in the ground and then putting seeds in the ground again. So mark everything. You can mark it with a name if you want. I don't really have to do that anymore because once it's three, four inches tall, I know exactly what it is. So I just like kind of throw it all the sticks in there just so I don't come in there and be like, did I plant this yet? Nothing's growing. What's going on? So in here, these pots here, I'll put a tomato plant right in there and then I don't have to disturb anything. And then along the front here, I've got beets growing. They haven't popped yet because I only put them in a couple days ago, but beets are super fun to grow because they're really quick. You'll get a beet in like less than two months. Woohoo! Super fun. So in this garden here, I've got some spinach growing. You'll see my baby spinach. So they got kind of attacked as well. They got beat up by the tarp, but not as bad as the other ones. So they didn't totally die. And so I replanted the spinach area. So I have some spinach plants that survived. And then so I've put in some... Um, green leaf lettuce and some romaine lettuce and then in the row in the middle so the lettuce is all on the outsides here and here and then down this row in the middle I put bush beans because bush beans are a hot weather crop so I put them in now but they won't start producing for about I don't know 70 days 80 days probably so it's once it's hot and so by the time they're really big and kind of cumbersome, the lettuce will be getting totally ripped out and replaced by chard or beets or radishes or something like that that can handle the heat. So they're not really going to compete with each other. And my goal with my garden is basically so that there's no soil showing <laughs> at all. Once it gets hot, I got no dirt showing because that is where you lose all of your moisture. You're not losing it to the plants you're losing it to the soil evaporation, to the air. So once we get hot sun and it bakes on that soil, you'll see your soil and your garden kind of crack. That's not good. <laughs> so either get more plants in that garden or put some mulch or hay on there. Keep the soil in, keep the water in your soil, keep it nice and hydrated or else your plants won't really thrive. They're gonna, they're gonna think they're dying and they're not gonna produce as much fruit. So at the end of this spinach bean lettuce concoction, I've got pole beans. And so again, I've got not a trellis, just a piece of dead tree that we found because I just like using things that I already had. So those trees were dead. I didn't cut anything that was live. And so it means that I'm kind of reusing. And so in between the pole beans, another mix that I've never done I put in turnip because it's a root vegetable and beans are not a root vegetable and beans are pretty good at making your soil kind of healthy. And so I figured, hey, I bet those turnips would do good together with those beans. But there's no way to know until you try. So I just thought, hey, I'll shove them in there and we'll see how they do. And uh, I don't really eat that much turnip, so I don't really care if it fails. You know, I'll try. And if it doesn't work, you know, try, try again. You know, so I've got a whole row of herbs here. So I've got some Italian oregano, curly parsley that came back from last year, some chives. So I've got some Greek oregano up here that's just kind of coming back to life. Got some rosemary that I just planted, some more Greek oregano, chives again. So a lot of those are perennials. You buy them once and you never have to buy them again, which is amazing. And herbs are really great to have in your vegetable garden because a lot of bugs really, really hate the way that they smell. <laughs> so they'll kind of leave you alone. That's the same reason that I put marigolds in the garden. Marigolds, apparently to bugs, are very smelly, very strong smelling, and they just really, really don't like them. So it kind of keeps them out of your plants a little bit. So, so far I've got potato, onion, kale, Swiss chard, another kind of potato, carrots, peas, got lettuces, some more peas, beans, beets, another type of bean, and then next week, once it gets really hot, we're getting tropical next week. Next weekend, it's 24 degrees and sunny. 
That's what I consider nice tropical weather. It gets your soil really hot. Then I'll put in some tomatoes and the peppers and the squash, cucumber, zucchinis. So these areas that I have still open, some of it will become a zucchini area. I do not put squash in my garden. And if I do, I put it at the edge of my garden so it can either be trellised or can trail out of my garden like onto the grass or something. Squash is a huge plant, it takes up a lot of space. Only the roots need to be in your garden. The rest of it can go wherever it wants. So just remember that, like sometimes it's not really worth it to have a squash plant. You're only gonna get a couple squash out of it if you take care of it. Like, be careful if you have a small garden and you're using things like that. Cucumbers, they'll be trellised once the greenhouse is in, which will hopefully be in the next couple weeks. Um, the cucumbers will climb up a rope onto the greenhouse frame. So they'll be kind of up and out. So they won't take up that much square footage. They'll just kind of be climbing up the sides. And then next week, once it gets hot too, I'll be coming to put in flowers in the garden. And I have a lot of flowers in my garden, a lot. So I'll be doing dahlias for cut bouquets, zinnias for cut bouquets. I put in some calendula seeds already just because they're gorgeous. And I've got gladiolus I'm gonna do. I've got antique pinks I'm gonna do. Um, some type of carnations I'm growing. So we've got lots of flowers and I intermingle these flowers with the veggies because I find that I get much better pollination because I do that. So the fruit, the, the flowers are just beautiful. They're not making any food for me to eat except for the nasturtium, but not everybody likes peppery leaves. So it might not be your thing, but they really bring in a lot more pollinators. So you'll get a lot more birds visiting your garden. You'll get a lot more of the butterfly bee varieties coming in because it means when you have a dahlia or you have a zinnia or you have something like that that flowers all the time, it means that you consistently have flowers in your garden. So it means that insects can consistently know that there's food in your garden for them to come and eat, which is what they're doing when they're pollinating. If you depend completely on your vegetable harvest to pull in those pollinators, you may not get as many because you don't have something blooming all the time. You'll go through phases in your garden where it gets really hot or whatever it is that you'll stop getting as much blooms on your vegetable plants. And this will decrease the amount of activity. So things like tomatoes and peppers, they bloom all summer. But they're these tiny, dinky little flowers. Like, what do you think a bumblebee is going to get out of that? That's like one chug out of a beer, you know? So they need to have a lot of flowers, a lot of variety to keep them here consistently. And so I found once I paired up blooming annuals, basically, <laughs> into my vegetable garden, then I started getting better harvests because the garden was getting pollinated more frequently. So your fruiting plants will get better fruit the more bees that visit them. And so just remember that. Remember to pull things in, trying to encourage, encourage insects to visit your garden. The beneficial insects, obviously. You don't want a ton of aphids bouncing around but the beneficial insects try and pull them into your garden plus it also makes it super pretty it makes it gorgeous when you guys see what this looks like in July you're gonna understand why I spend so much time making sure that the flowers are integrated because the flowers are probably my favorite part I love the food I'm not gonna lie especially this year I feel like it's really important but the flowers just make my heart sing and they make the garden look so gorgeous. And so it makes it a little easier to come and do your three, four hours of maintenance when you get to look at these gorgeous flowers, make a couple cut bouquets for your house, and then you're done. So I have one full row still that's empty and two half rows, basically, that don't have anything in them. So probably we're gonna put in some, some zucchini. 
The squash is going to go at the far corner and be trellised up. I'm going to try and grow uh, loofahs. I can't really find the seeds that I wanted, so I'm going to try and get some of that. And then I'll be growing some more pole beans that will grow up and cucumbers that will grow up. But I have some empty spaces in here. Um, if you're in the area of Embram and Russell and you need seeds, there's still lots of seeds available. So don't despair. I know that Beyond the House still had some. And I have some excess as well. So, you know, there's lots of people. Just ask your neighbors if they're growing gardens. They probably don't need all of the seeds. So just get out there. If you haven't started anything from seed, you haven't put a seed in the ground yet, and you're thinking, it's not really worth it, you have to understand it's the middle of May. You still got a solid five months to grow a lot of food. So we can, you can grow a lot of great things in less than five months. Onions are quick kale is quick swiss chard is quick beets are quick radishes are super quick so get out there and grow some things even if you make a mistake it doesn't matter i would love to have more questions so if you guys have any more questions that you want me to answer please let me know um oh i forgot something that i'm growing for the first time this year i'm very very excited i've decided to grow some peanuts so I'm putting them in a planter just because I don't really know how successful they are like Ottawa doesn't really have the best peanut climate it's a little chilly here a little early so I've put them into this pail with some kind of sandy uh, planting mix so it's not quite as wet as my garden would be because they said that peas really like to have well irrigated soil that's kind of sandy I mean, not peas, peanuts. So I'm really excited to see how the peanuts will do. I will give you guys an update as they grow. And I'm really hoping that they do well, just because it'd be fun to empty out a barrel full of peanuts at the end of the year and pick all the peanuts out. And so, yeah, that's my, my new thing this year. I'm also going to try and grow okra this year. I don't really cook with it, but I feel like I should. So I'm going to try and grow it. It's a beautiful flower. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, I'm sure you've heard enough of me chat and blabber. There's a full garden view right there. But if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd love to try and help you guys out. I hope that your garden adventures are going great. And I hope everyone's enjoying their family time and their quiet time. Okay, we'll see you guys soon.